Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So with a new patch brings new features and exciting little gadgets. So in this patch, we're actually having a look at the conveyor system. So we've got these new conveyor blocks, we've got three new blocks, and we've seen this conveyor one for quite a while, but we didn't actually have any functionality with it before. But now it works as a joint for the conveyor tubes, so you can stick the conveyor tubes on here and send them up, down, and all around your station or ship. So the conveyor tube's really simple, really nicely designed, and hopefully maybe one day we'll be able to see the item passing through the little window in the tube. Now over here we have the collector, so this job is to suck you in. No, I'm not suck you in, it's supposed to suck any item that you place in front of it and it'll store it nicely away in your cargo containers. And finally, we have the connector. Now, from what I can tell, the connector basically spews items out and you can also use it to fire the items to other areas. So you might want to launch them slowly over to that other area and it'll produ produce them at such a slow rate that it'll basically send it and drift it across maybe into another collector itself and then you can actually store it elsewhere without the need for pipes. So let's actually have a look at the collector. Well, this is the connector. Very similar names, very confusing. So in this cargo crate, we have nothing, but let's just drop a few items in. So I've added a few bits in there, and now what we want to do is we want to eject them out of here, like so. So there we go. It's very simple, and it projects them one by one. It splits the items up, so it's very nice. You can get a nice item split and pick them up. So you can see we've actually got the connector here. And you can see how we've got it on, and then it's collect all, throw out, so it'll basically throw items out, and you can turn this on and off, so you can wait for the right moment, maybe you're loading up a ship or something. Now, over here, we have the tubes. Now, the tubes have two states, connected and unconnected. If they are yellow like this, they're in operation, and if they are not red like this, this means they're not connected and they won't work properly. So if we connect them up, go over to this cargo container, we have some AG in here. Now, if we try to move it to one of these cargo containers that's not connected, it doesn't work, it's grayed out. But we have this other cargo container on the other side that it's actually connected to, and we can move things to that. So that's really useful if you want to move like uranium to the reactor, and you've got one of these conveyor belt systems plugged into your ship. You can just unload it from your main hangar straight into your reactor, and off you go. And it means you can secure your reactor and your engine rooms a lot more safely without having to have doors and accesses to actually get into them. Now moving on to the final part, and this is of course the collector. Now you're going to drop items in the top here, and they are collected in the crate below. So I'm just going to demonstrate this now. So I'm going to get a little bit of height so you can see the item actually drop. So we've got 45 of them, 45 of them, and then you can see, there we go, it's dropped down into here. And if we open this up, we can see that's actually collected the items inside. Now let's actually have a look at some of the more complicated and exciting uses for these items. So one of the biggest areas that these new items are going to affect is mining. So this is a ship that I've shown you before, but I've refitted it and repaired it and made it basically more efficient with the new items. So we've got two crates in the back instead of the landing gear hole in the rock. They connect it up. And at the front, we have a collector, so any spare rocks that these drills don't manage to catch will be sucked into there, and then sucked into the containers behind. Now, these drills can be a little bit troublesome to unload, as we know. So what I've done is I've connected it up here to this little pipe work system, and then it actually feeds it all into these containers. So all I need to do, when I'm full, is open up the, either the rear nozzle or the nozzle underneath, and unload it into a mining transport that I have waiting over there. So let's get drilling and let's see how this thing works. Now to put the system into practice, we're gonna do a little bit of mining over here, over in this section, and we're gonna see how well this actual collects the items up. So we're just gonna drill sideways, and you can see we're sucking quite a lot of the debris and dirt up that we'd usually lose or be floating off behind us. So we're just scraping it away, and there we go. So let's actually move this back over and drop off what we've collected. So pretend we're full, we need to take this back to this little supply truck and then drop it in so that can then transport it back to the base where it can be refined, processed and so on. So we've got the hive facility down there on the right and we just need to line up our nozzles. So uh, let's just work this out. Uh, we should be over the target now. I think that's pretty much good enough. Yeah, there we go. So what I need to do now is open up one of these connectors. So it's not the second one, it's the first one. And unload that there. So we've got the rocks dropping on out. 
So there we go. Rocks are dropping on out now from my little mining ship into my other ship that's going to transport it over to the base. So you could probably increase the speed of this by adding a gravity generator to this platform. So you could speed it up a lot faster. So let's actually have a go at that. So we've got a gravity generator there and we're just going to whack one of them down and we also need some power. So yeah, there we go. That's the speed increase that you wanted. So we're just moving that, filling that up, and then what we'd do is we'd cut that off. So let's just pretend that's empty. <laughs> we didn't have a few rocks falling out, but there we go. And we're just going to take on off. So we're now full, and we're heading back to base to drop our supplies off. So this ship as well has some nozzles underneath. So we just need to park ourselves over the nozzles at the base. Now, originally I'd have to fly in there and manually load them into the hangar. But now I can process this stuff so much faster. And if you've got an organized team, it's going to be absolutely amazing. So we're just above the actual cargo drop bay. And we need to open up all of them. So we've got these connectors open. Got another one. And we've got that other one there. So this should be three times faster. There we go. Don't want to turn the power off. That would be a bad idea. So yeah, everything's just unloading into the pods below and it's feeding back into my base. And then it's actually feeding this into the reactor and it's also feeding it into the other components. So it's being refined and then all I have to do is nip downstairs, get my uh, uranium ingots and off I'm going. My base is basically powered constantly. Absolutely beautiful. Anyway, let's move on to looking at a bit more of a resupply role. So I'd like to welcome you back to the arms production facility, that's a, a non-disclosed location and I've slowly been overhauling it today, I've been upgrading some of the components and getting it a little bit more aut automated you could say, so I don't need as many players. So I've been actually working on the sorting system, we've actually got rockets and we've got ammunition and as soon as it's processed it comes to be dropped in these cells ready for collection and then move into the next area. So I'm just going to quickly show you that, I'll use this little control panel here rather than go find myself a cockpit and all we need to do is find the connectors wherever they may be where are you connectors I guess you begin with a C there you go and we turn that on we turn that on and you can see basically what's happening the ammo is being dropped off the rockets are being piled up ready for the next shipment you've got to be careful of course you don't want to overstock each shelf and that's why I'm gonna work on a system where I can actually move these funnels along to the different other shelves that we need. Uh, the ammunition itself is, I think, stacking up a little bit too much. I think I may have blocked the nozzle, actually. Let's clear that out a little bit. I can keep topping that up. And, yes, we've, we, this could cause a serious situation if I don't work out a way to make this more efficient. I think what I'm going to have to do is maybe, like, have a rule and a count on how many I actually have per shelf. Otherwise we're going to have a little bit of a situation so eventually we'll have these all along here we'll have one of these behind each one of these little door entrances you can see i've just started to install that one behind there and we should make this place a whole lot more automated so what's ever assembled in here will be brought back through behind the wall here up here and dropped onto the required shelf and then the user will come collect it up collect the order and walk through that door to the delivery bay Anyway, let's move on. Now, another concept I quite liked is the ability to rearm through this machine and actually get your weapons and ammunition replenished by launching them outside of a tube. So we've got this ship in here, for instance, and it needs some ammunition. We can just drive up to the window like a drive through resupply the ship, and get the hell out of there. Quite simple, quite fast, quite effective. But the most important part is try to make it so you actually aim and don't miss the hole. Now, it can be a little bit hard at times, I understand. But it is a new challenge. Maybe get as close as possible is the best option. But let's move on. So my final test was trying to weaponize these new items. So what I did was I got my explosives out and I put one in each tube. Now, I launched it at each tube and I found out that these explosives no longer explode like they used to. So I'm just going to run towards this and throw this out so look it just bounces off now it no longer explodes how interesting and i'm not sure if it's actually been introduced in this patch that but a lot of the normal object items don't seem to be doing much damage at all so i'll just dash something else at this target now you can see just some steel plate just seems to be going straight through 
Now that's a little bit strange, but maybe they've done this so we can't actually turn such a peaceful device into a weapon. But I'm not too sure. Now this little hole there was a little mistake of mine. But thanks for watching guys, and let me know what you're going to be making with this new patch. So I'll see you next time.